Hey, what is up, Fight Fans? Michael Hernandez here of MLH Media, and we are here today for the 10-second mark. One of the best prospects in all of the Central Valley is here to join me today, Francisco Hurtado. How are you doing today, brother? Oh, I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Yes, the 2-0 prospect over there out of Tri-City MMA. Just got done talking to your teammate yesterday. Fabian Maldonado had some very kind words to say about you. How is it to get to train over there at Tri-City MMA, a gym that not only has got guys over to 5-5 man fights and had some pretty successful careers, obviously Enoch being one of those guys, but to also be doing it, doing it in yourself. I mean, you got two KOs in a row, looking to possibly make it a third one coming up here at five five nine fights a hundred. What are your thoughts going into everything, man? Uh, oh man, it's a blessing uh, to be uh, to train at Tri City MMA. Uh, you know, we got amazing coaches. Coach uh, our coach uh, Bubby, uh, Coach Lowell Bubby Watson, and Coach uh, Robert Pimentel. And uh, you know, the atmosphere the atmosphere in there is just uh, unique because. We have, like, guys that, you know, been in the fight game already. Guys like, you know, uh, Chino, Chino Bautista. From when I started, it was, like, Domingo, uh, you know, Sergio Cisco, um, Josh Boger, Bomber. And then, uh, so, they still stop by in the gym. And then, you know, they'll, they'll come in and help us out. Same and thing, like, I got um, Dimitri uh, works with me. Dimitri Edwards works with me with my boxing. Um, and then... As far as like my teammates that were, and then as far as like uh, my teammate like Fabian Maldonado and Enoch Macatro, Jose Aguiniga, and Sid, you guys will see Sid. He'll make his debut. Uh, Everyone's just a hard worker. Uh, we're all in there. Um, Israel Adama too, and Andrew Rios. Um, that will come up later in the in the in the MMA game. They're doing their thing in Muay Thai right now. Orlando Iniguez too, but um, you know, everyone just it's it's a unique atmosphere because we coach, well Coach Bub and Coach Rob they put us through the hard workouts and the and the ringer and uh, uh you know they push us to our limits every day and then uh to have teammates like. Cheeto, like Fabian and uh, Enoch, just are amazing wrestlers, amazing fighters, and uh, they work ethics uh, top notch. Um, Fabian's actually my, my partner, so you know that's a blessing working with him because he's always pushing me to get, become better. His boxing's uh, you know real crisp. Oh, shout out to uh, Coach Mike out there in Avenel. Enoch, Fabian's wrestling is top notch too, and then uh, Enoch's wrestling. So we always kind of uh, work with each other and become better. And it's really a you know iron sharpens iron kind of uh, mentality in the gym in there. How did you get so, first in the gym? Did it start with wrestling? Did it start with boxing? What was your first kind of martial art endeavor? Uh, so funny story actually. Uh, so when I first started, so I was like fourteen, right? When I first started, I barely I turned fourteen. But uh, before that, so I was I was a freshman in high school and I was uh, playing football and uh, I was having like the the biggest success, right? Like uh. Well, I kind of learned that in the summertime when I was in football that, you know, weights are like, you, are like you need to hit the weights. And I, I don't got no big brother. Uh, I'm the oldest of three. So, so so when I was like a freshman, I didn't have the biggest success in football. I, was, uh, I wasn't starting. I did play soccer, so I was a punter and stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I didn't have the biggest success. Uh, my dad works with, with, uh, with Lowell. And so uh, my coach Lowell, Bubby, he followed, uh, he followed my dad home one day and then uh, took, took us to his house. And then yeah, he opened up the, the garage and he gave me the rundown, the you know, the gym rules. Don't be a bully. And what you use in here, don't use out there. You know, and then he kind of broke down how the camaraderie is in there. Like he like compared it to like a, um, it's kind of like a, it's like a real team dynamic. So, uh, cause, cause you know, so, so before they were like, he, my dad called me, he's like, Hey man, uh, this guy that trains, uh, he's, he's, fo he's following me home. Uh, we'll go to his house. He has a gym in his garage. And I'm thinking like a commercial gym, like, like, damn, you got a big old house in Kalinga, like with the you know, like with the weights, like I was thinking like, like Gold's Gym in there, you know? Yeah. And then, <laughs> and I open it up and it's mats and bags and I'm like, oh, like, what the hell? <laughs> and immediately, like, kind of like, like a nervous feeling, but, uh, but then that's when, uh, you know, Coach Belly broke it down. It's like, look, it's like, there's nothing to be worried, no, nothing to be worried about. Like, you know, team dynamic in here, you know, we're all in here to push each other to get better. And then, so, yeah, so he definitely alleviated my nerves right there because I was like, damn, like, all adults, MMA, like, I would give an ass whip. <laughs> yeah, but no, that's kind of how I started. So then um, shortly after, I went to his garage, and we started, I got a couple sessions in there, and then we moved he out. got a spot uh, in town, and we and we stayed there for, like, uh, five, six years, and then we just recently moved to our new spot that we're at right now. Awesome story right there, man. It all came from a failed freshman football career. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so and then uh, the next year, I, I got, uh, um, you know, Bubby worked with me, and uh, got me better, and, and then uh, after that, the next year, you know, I went to varsity. So, you know, everyone out there, uh, if you guys uh, feel like you guys aren't having uh, the most success at the moment, 
uh, it's all good. You know, just keep working, keep grinding, and then uh, stay consistent with it. Eventually, your hard work will catch up to you, and you'll see the results. And don't get discouraged. <laughs> That's absolutely crazy, man. That's just like the journey that you described is like kind of weird because a lot of people don't really get into fighting at such a young age to be a freshman in high school obviously some people start at their adolescence but you started at kind of a weird age to get into things your freshman year of high school you started getting into the gym started kind of getting around everything and then eventually just becoming a, a consumed in the culture did you also do wrestling or anything of the sort uh at your high school yeah, so so uh, I saw I, I wrestle wrestle like in for like the uh, high school like the folk style um, my junior and senior year, so wow. like my freshman was a football MMA football freshman sophomore year was football MMA football MMA and then my junior and senior year was like football wrestling MMA football wrestling MMA and now was, obviously all MMA all around so. I was talking to your teammate yesterday and we were talking a little bit about that Kalinga Avenal rivalry. Did you kind of ever get to experience a little bit of that from back in your day? Uh, you know what? Yeah, like they we have like a it is like a Kalinga Avenal rivalry. Like when you go to the t to the wrestling tournaments, Kalinga and Avenal we kind of like sit together. But uh, as far as like you see that more rivalry stuff like well, like like the other sport like football and like uh I'm pretty sure like basketball and soccer and stuff like that. Okay, football it was a rivalry. But uh, actually, a fu funny story. Uh, Fabian and I wrestled in high school, and uh, Fabian won my ass. So. <laughs> Wow. Well, that, that's a revelation right there, man. And obviously you guys came together and are doing your guys' things now as teammates. So you're doing the thing at the 170 division. He's doing his thing over there at the 185. And I feel like it's a pretty good balance. But your upcoming fight for the in 170 is going to be against Richard Sandoval, a guy that's been experienced in 559 fights before. Um, no, uh, it's going to be against uh, Alfredo Valles. Alfredo Valles, a recent uh, change in opponents for you? Yeah. Yes, uh, very unfortunate, but, but how does that feel to also get a new opponent and kind of get a new, fresher outlook? Does that change things for you with it being so close to the fight day? I, I forgot to, uh, I was going to say, uh, honestly, like the Kalinga Avenal, uh, you know how we have like the rivalry? It's kind of, uh, I like, to be honest now, it's, the, well, Tri-City stands for like, try like Kalinga here on Avenal. It's really like a rivalry, like that's like like uh I mean there is a rivalry, my bad. Don't don't they? It's a long term thing, like Kalinga and Avenal, like our high schools. Yeah. But like now, as we're adults and stuff, uh, like it's like no rivalry. You know, it's like uh we're all a team because that's the Tri City. It like, comes from the Kalinga here on Avenal. So we actually uh work like with the uh, underdog boxing with Coach Mike out there in Avenal. We we start we work over there. So we go. He trains us. Uh, the blessing to train us, then work with them, and he allowed us in his gym. So uh, a couple of us, we go over there once a week, a couple times a week, and then uh, he, he works with us and helps us develop. So that's kind of like, it's kind of funny because like, that's like a high school thing. And then like when we grow up and become adults and uh, we, we're like, now we're all like, we're, we're a big team, you know? That is very funny because I'm pretty sure even kids go in there like wrestling or whatever from Kalinga and Avenal. You guys kind of have to be like, hey, like, we don't care about that anymore. You know, we're doing our own things. We're all together as a team now. But I really wanted to touch into that, you know, because obviously Fabian uh, ties very heavily into Avenal. You obviously represent uh, heavily your city. So it's it's very uh, – you guys rep your cities over there in that tri-city area, which I also – I like from those small towns because it really just shows like, hey, no matter where you're from, you can be successful. You don't got to pick the biggest nearby city. You don't got to lie and say you're from Visalia or Fresno. You know, you say, hey, I'm from, I'm from this city, and this is where I'm going to represent, man. So I definitely rock with you guys doing your thing out there at Tri-City – MMA man but just a little bit more uh we were talking obviously about your 559 fights career have had a pretty successful one have had two KOs in the past won the first round won the second round what are you predicting for this upcoming fight my man I don't even honestly it's that's a funny question because I don't even like uh predicting anything uh because I just I, I don't know I have like a like Maybe we're like, oh, what do you predict? Uh, what round, Bob? Or, you know, like, uh, however it goes. And I'm like, oh, I kind of, like, do that because, uh, you know, when I go in there, I kind of just uh, see see what I get and then kind of feel out my, my opponent. And then uh, because I feel like this is my own thing. It's, I don't know, kind of weird or whatever, uh, like a mental, like, it's like, okay. Or it kind of alter like, in the, like, subconsciously, like, you're, like, looking for that. You're forcing things. And, uh, you know, that's kind of when the mistakes happen when you start looking at the forcing things. I kind of just, like, I like going – I do say this, though. I do say, uh, as, as long as I get my hand raised, by any means, uh, that's all that matters. You know, the win's a win. And uh, whether it's on the ground, on top, uh, on our feet, or uh, 
to the decisions. That's the thing. I, I don't even have no uh, nothing to go off of because uh, he has a he he has an O and O record, and then uh, I I don't even think he has a picture on his camo like uh, so I could even like try to like look for him. <laughs> so there's really nothing to go off of. So uh, <laughs> I, whereas like Richard, he had a like three fights, and uh, you know he had a, b- a bunch of footage that uh that I was looking at. Uh, Seal him out, see what's up, see 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 what he gives me, and then uh, we'll, we'll move from there and adjust mid fight or you know go my corner and see see what uh, my coaches tell me uh, what's open and what's not. He he comes from a hammer down. He comes from a good gym, so I, I expect him to be tough. Like as as all my opponents, you know, we go off the distance. Good, you know, that's what I expect anyway. A uh, hard war, and if not, we get a finish sooner than later. Then you know, even better. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, hammer down fight team is somebody uh, a team that is providing another one of the participants in five five nine fights hundred. A guy that is going to be fighting for the one eighty five title. Do you feel that you and your teammate? Obviously, you guys are both rising up the rankings. If you get this upcoming fight, you're going to be three and zero. If Fabian gets this upcoming fight, he's going to be two and zero. Two Tri City guys that would be undefeated. Where are you feeling you kind of lie in the five five nine uh rankings? Because what we'll we'll see. So after this fight, you know, of course, uh, we have to get to this fight first, and then we become a you know, hopefully we're looking to be three and zero. Oh. They're fighting for the belt, uh, Pedro Trujillo and uh and uh, uh I want to say it's Jared Titsworth. Yes, uh, Titsworth, uh, Jeremy Titsworth is going to be fighting Pedro Trujillo. Oh, I'm, I'm, so they're fighting for the belt that night. So then, uh, so I'll definitely be uh keeping an eye on that fight for sure. Um. But yeah, so it honestly, it's, it's a whatever the five on nine fights uh, decides. Uh, it'll be tight to fight for the belt, of course. You know that's what we're after. And then uh, if not, if they say you gotta fight this this guy and that guy, and then and then get the belt. You know, oh well, then uh, we'll just we'll fight whoever they tell us to fight. And uh, whenever they say, hey, title fight, obviously uh, we'll take it. You know, we'll go from there. There's a I, Giovanni Asensio would, would also be kind of waiting in the rafters there at 185. Would you possibly be open to possibly uh, scrapping it up with him uh, for a one a number one contender spot? Because he was supposed to be the guy fighting for the title, but if he doesn't get that uh, title shot. Yeah, uh, yeah. Honestly, whoever, uh, whoever uh, we got to fight to to get the belt, whether it's the next fight to belt fight or whether I got to fight Giovanni and some other guy, and whoever uh, you know, will fight. As long as we're not, as long as we're healthy and we stay healthy, then uh, yeah, obviously, uh, whoever uh, Jeremy and the Five Nine Fights decide that uh, we need to fight before to get a title fight, or if he feels like we're deemed to get a title fight already, you know, then we're there. That so. sounds like that sounds like a plan to me, and I think that's going to sound like a plan to a lot of fight fans because I was talking a little bit to Fabian yesterday. You guys from Tri City always bring out a ton of fan support a ton of uh huge just fanfare in general i feel like the 559 fights is more lively whenever tri-city mma is on that card talk a little bit about that talk a little bit about the support you guys get over there uh, um from the tri-city area yeah so man it's, it's, it's a huge blessing definitely uh you know it's it's uh it's it definitely gets like like a warm feeling you know when you're coming out and you hear uh the support you got and uh everyone's going uh you know, showing out, showing love. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Kalinga and Avenel, man, and, and Huron, they uh, they, we, they always show love. So, uh, shout out Kalinga and Huron and Avenel. Um, although, like, we're small towns, right? But uh, whenever we, we go to, like, uh, for example, like, uh, say, we go, like, uh, to away games for, for, like, you know, like, my little brother plays football. So, it's, like, just I see in the high school games, since I was in high school or whatever, um, you Kalinga just always takes numbers and takes support. Um, so as like when we go to the five five nine fights, you know, shout out to uh, also um my my I work at the hospital right here in uh at the Kalinga State Hospital, so uh they always show love, man. It's a, it's a uh so shout out to them too because they're always uh showing out and uh showing support and um yeah, it's definitely a amazing feeling whenever um we walk out there and and uh, everyone we we they they let us know they're there for us you know you I, you can even hear them like uh, going like uh what's it called Just in the cage you know you hear them in the cage like like in the back of your head you're and you just kind of feel it and it kind of like gives you like a like a little like a little extra you know like yeah 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 like a little extra push like it's even hard to describe but uh it's an amazing feeling 
No, I, I can only imagine, man, the support that it came out when you had entered the Octagon to face George Torres was probably, I, I would say, like, top 10, top 5 entrances, because you and Fabian just brought the house down. When I, I There was so much to where it was like, hey, we had, to, we had to calm it down for a little bit. It was so loud in there to where I don't think anybody could hear anything. That was definitely one of the most, I feel like, hyped up fights fan fan wise between you and george torres how is it to be a part of a matchup like that where obviously he has a huge fan base his side of the cage is rumbling your side of the cage is rumbling was that pretty cool to be kind of facing off against the guy that has that much of a backing behind him also yeah man so uh what's it called uh shout out george torres man uh he's a super tough opponent it, it was definitely like surreal man it felt like uh like uh like I don't even want to say it was almost like a, like a movie, but I like kind of like was like a I don't even know how to explain it, man. Uh, so I was we were in there, and then you know they, obviously they're going crazy for him, or they announced my name, and then uh, our crowd's going crazy. It's like almost like a cheer off, you know. So what's it called? That's what I was gonna say like last time too, like whenever um, I was like you know Kalinga, uh, like our support of the Tri City, what's it called? Like, they always go and support the fighter and like say for example like when George uh, his his crowd was going the battle looked like crowd uh, yeah. <laughs> Cool. like it's like tight man that, that was a tough fight too with our striking is uh really good his uh, ground game as well also very prevalent on the ground uh had a little bit of a grappling match uh, a grappling match against chris Pies, put up against solid but man yeah your guys' fight on the feet was an absolute war yeah uh i remember he uh went to the yeah, like an exchange and then uh i felt him like trying to uh when he put me on the cage and i was like oh man i was like man he get i need to get the hell up out of here because uh you know this guy my what's it called hurt me if I stay <laughs> I definitely felt that right then and there I was like oh man let me, let me. and then uh, I tried cutting this way and then he kind of cut me off so I was like oh fuck so then I had to come back the other way um but yeah so definitely uh gave me a couple uh like, I got a couple lumps after too <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy feeling especially I can't even imagine for you like how you said with everything you had going into the fight all the support and then obviously all the support George had and then just for everything to entail the way that it entailed inside of Gator's cage was absolutely insane but Francisco, I really want to appreciate, thank you and appreciate you for your time today to pull aside, not only today, but also on a Sunday, you know, a day that is, uh, has a lot of people have off, but I'm pretty sure with all your work at the hospital, all the hard work you're putting in, and also all the hard work in the gym, you're a pretty busy man. But I just wanted to give you this last kind of minute here. Did you have anybody, any sponsors you wanted to thank, anybody over in the area, any training partners in particular that have really, really helped to contribute to this camp and have really helped? Help to help for this fight for five five nine fights hundred. Yeah, uh, so you know, like like I mentioned a couple names earlier. Uh, thank Coach Mike um, for uh, allowing us over there, uh, Underdog Boxing, um, in Avenel. Yeah, he he uh, we he took us in um, and works with us and uh, trains us. Um, you know, just Chino Bautista, uh, Demetri Edwards. Um, Demetri Edwards, a super top notch boxer. Um, Chino Bautista fought as well. Uh, top notch uh, wrestler fighter uh what's it called um always comes in and and uh and tries to uh, help help out with us um he's a busy man as well but um so i appreciate it every time he comes in same thing with Josh Boker, uh what's it called um yeah uh Josh Boker, uh he he uh, he was state finalist and uh so top uh, wrestler as well and uh he same thing with him he comes in and helps out um Dimitri Edwards a uh, top notch boxer actually uh you know, I was uh, a couple weeks ago too. I was like, "Hey, uh, I just called him out the blue. I said, "Hey, uh, can we can we train get a session in?" He's like, oh, "Yeah, man, come through." Uh, so he's always uh, open doors for us and helps us out and uh, works with us. Sometimes he comes in the gym as well. It's a blessing to uh, have a, co a teammates and slash coaches that uh, like uh, uh, you know obviously uh, Lowell and uh, Rob are head coaches, but you know like they've been in the game and they always come in and give their time. Always uh kind of like uh, any pointers that they see or anything they've seen from the last fights too because they're always at our fights. Um, They'll work with it and we kind of tweak things and then kind of pat try to patch up our holes. Um, so it's a blessing. Sponsors, uh, you know, shout out Blocks, uh, my barber. He gets me right. <laughs> blocks. Uh, I got a boy, uh, Eric Saldana, Saldana Detailing. He, uh, so you guys are in the area. You guys need your whip detailed. Um, you know, he's, he's a beast. Hit him up. Um, bomb detail as well. Bomb bomber. Uh, he's also a teammate too. Yeah, bomber actually fought too, so he comes in as well and helps us out with the uh, the training. Um, and then it's definitely a blessing to have our you know uh, Enoch Cheetos. I mean uh, Fabian Enoch Fabian, 
um, Jose, Israel, Orlando. We, we uh, shout out uh, the Pit and Valley Fight Club for uh, always being open doors for us as well and helping us out. Hey, man, definitely a lot of people you have to thank, a lot of gyms that you also have to give some thanks to as well. Um, so shout out to Valley Fight Club and also big shout out to the Pit over there, um, obviously yeah. all of the Central Coast. But yes, they definitely have helped a lot. And I've always uh, seen the Pit always kind of collaborating with you guys over at Tri-City MMA. I've always liked that combination. Of, so thank you today, Francisco, for your time. Always very much appreciated. You're always welcome on anytime you would like, man. I'm I'm very thankful to have you on anytime, my brother. Michael Hernandez here of MLH Media, and we are going to be signing out here for the 10-second yeah. mark with Francisco Hurtado. Thank you. Have a good day. Hey, you as well, brother.